Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable picnic basket style gift bag. I've decorated mine with all the autumnal colours, but this would look great for all occasions. So I'm going to definitely revisit this in a different size for Christmas. I'm doing a Halloween version for the tutorial today, but I can see this for birthdays and like I said, many other occasions. I've added the bigger handle here as well, because this one here, if you lift this, it will reveal lots of mini pumpkins so I kept this as a surprise I did give a sneak peek of this during my card tutorial which was the previous video and I show you how to make this card here so these two are matching so these are going to be given as a gift together but inside each of these little pumpkins is one Lindor chocolate and I just think they're super cute there's quite a lot in there um two four six eight ten twelve fourteen six 15 I think 15 and then 16 I think but obviously you don't have to add those you can pop lots of other things in there I'm going to be doing a Halloween version and when I was doing that one I think it would be really good if you'd done all these strips in red and they were like mini apples so it could be like poisonous apples or something I thought that was quite a good idea or you could do the apples and have it as a teacher's gift so there's so many different ways I think that you can play around with this and decorate it and hopefully you'll really like the tutorial so let's get started so the inspiration for this one has actually come from my handbags book, which I've been working my way through. I have a whole playlist of the gift bags that I've made from this book, but I also have hundreds of gift bags in my gift bag playlist as well. So I'll link those up here. But if I show you this one here, so this is what's given me the inspiration. This is a German bag from 1830. It just gives you a little bit of information there. It says this is a rare box bag. And it's decorated with scenes of the barracks and the city hall in Frankfurt. So you can see where I've, the main bit I've taken from it is this kind of shape here, this lip and that this sits inside. And you can see that there and just the angles where it's smaller on the top and the base there. I haven't added this extra bit on the bottom because it does stand up fine, but that's the inspiration. So I know lots of you are enjoying the bags that I share from this book and I will get through it. The aim is to maybe <laughs> 10 years time, get through all of that. So I used the 12 by 12 autumn fun paper pad by Simply Made Crafts to decorate this one. And the orange cardstock is the Lidl cardstock. Again, if anybody's got that. The pumpkins are from my own uh, new collection and I'll show you that because I'm using those sets on the gift bag today. And it's nice that they're 12 by 12 for these you know, bigger projects. For today, I'm using my Halloween papers and I've already got those all cut and ready along with my stamps and dies here as well i believe when this video goes out there is a bundle where you can get these two which are the stamp and die sets and the icon die set which is this one here those three you buy the bundle and you get this free so it's while stocks last because we don't have a huge amount of these left but for anybody that's still looking for some nice halloween sets then there is that offer there so you want two pieces of 12 by six and a half cardstock and along the 12 inch side, you're going to score at half an inch and, and then rotate it. So the half inch is at the bottom and you're going to score at one and a half, five, five and a half and six. Pop it back along the 12 inch side so the half inch tab, half inch tab is on the left hand side. And then you're going to score at one and a half just to the first score line, seven and a half to the first score line, nine and a half to that first score line, and 11. Okay. I hope you can just see those lines picking up. There we go. So you want to do that twice. And then you'll want two pieces of four and three eighths by 11 and three quarters. Along the 11 and three quarter side, you're going to score at half an inch and eight and three eighths. Again, rotate it so that half inch is along the bottom and you're going to score at one and three eighths and two and seven eighths. Rotate it back along the long side. And again, these measurements I give you are just to the first score line. So one and a half, seven and three eighths nine and three eighths and ten and three quarters okay 
Again, do that one twice. Fold and burnish all those score lines and then we're going to cut them so they look like this. So first of all, we'll start with the largest piece and I'm going to bring this one in here. Now I have already stuck a little bit of this side down, but if I open it, you can imagine you've got your three pieces there, which are these three pieces here. So we need to do a little bit more scoring. Okay, so I'm going to keep this one in shot so you can see where I can use this as a reference to where we're cutting and scoring. So we need to do a few extra lines. So where you score down to the first score line only, we need to do another score line from the bottom of that score line down to the bottom corner of the largest rectangle piece. So if I show you on this one, if I turn it up this way, you can see here where I've cut it all away, but that's the score line from the line where I just scored down to the first one. You can see where I've just scored across down to there. So I'm going to take my ruler, pop my stylus down first and then move the ruler so it's in the right angle and just score right down. Okay, so if I can see there, there's that score line and then from the bottom, just come down. Everything we score is within the largest rectangle. Then you're going to go across to the next score line and again, just score down. OK, and then now we've that's the big rectangle piece. Now you've got this smaller, more of a square here and you've got your two score lines that come down there to the first score line. You're going to do the same. You're going to score down to here and then score from the bottom of this one down to the edge. And you can see that in this one. So there's that square rectangle. You can see where I've scored down to create that shape. We're going to do the same on the smaller piece, but I'll go over that in a minute. We'll just get this all done first. So what we need to do next is cut away these pieces so that you're just left with the sections that are above the score line. So if you think of that as like a triangle shape, you're just keeping that square above it and then here that long rectangle piece above it. So what I'm going to do is just take my pencil and put a cross in all of the bits that we're removing. So if I start here, we're going to remove the longest part of the half inch and then the little bit above it. Then that one next to it. And then you've got that large piece. Then there'd be two. You want to remove those. Then keep that square, which is this one here, and then remove that last piece there. OK. So right now you want to make sure that you've got this shape and you should have three long sections that are full. You've not cut into those or anything yet. Then you can burnish these score lines. So you're going to make them all mountain folds. So a mountain here and then that one will become a valley in the middle so that the one next to it can be a mountain. If you sit those next to each other... You get that effect there and then again make sure they're burnished nicely and you've got all those points okay then along here you've got three little squares you just want to keep the middle one then what you want to do is cut down all three here on that score line OK, so you just freed up that end piece. You want to fold it all over so you've got two on the inside and you're going to fold that one back out. Basically, you want to have this little ledge and that is what's going to form this platform inside here, which allows the lid to sit on top of that. So you've got your three. If I hold it this way, if you say if we say this is one, this is two and this is three, one and two, you're going to stick together. So you're just folding them over again so you've got two on the inside keep that third one free so i'm just going to add my glue all along there and then fold that over and just give that a good burnish okay so you should have now two pieces like that you can see on my original one i've got that extra tab and then here sit them now side by side you're just going to be attaching them together just by this little square at the minute but eventually you're going to stick these pieces together as well so you want to stick that one 
on that number one. So again, one, two, the third one is the outer one. And then you'll be able to fold that one over and fold those down and keep that free. Okay, so we just need to sandwich these pieces in between the layers. So I'm just going to sit that one there. Just make sure that it's all nice and straight, like so. And then I can fold that one over. So now I'm going to add my glue all down again along number one. One, two, three, and fold that over. And give that a good burnish. And then fold the whole thing over and just make sure that it's all straight with the one below with each other. Okay. Okay, so now I've got there's the join. That's what I've just stuck together. So I'm just going to fold over the biggest piece for the minute. And you'll have that other little square. Add your glue on there. And again, you're going to stick it into that one. But if you just fold that over and just make sure it sticks on that one. Again, this is just a good way for you to make sure everything's folding flat and it's all nice and straight. And then with this one, if you bring it around, you'll be able to get your glue in there. So again, I'm just adding it to that first section and then you can fold those in. If it's a little tight or if you feel like the card's catching a little bit, just shave a little bit off the side. Just cut some of it away. Next, I would just fold up all of these tabs for the minute. Just get them out of the way. Okay. Just so they're kind of folded away. What you're going to do now is add glue to one of the sides and you're going to stick them together. And you'll start to create that angle, those kind of corners doesn't matter what side you add it to, but make sure you get right up to the point. So I definitely use a liquid glue rather than a tape. And then just slide that around until it's in place. And this will now start to really strengthen it all. And you can go inside, if you use your bone folder, and you can just get in and really spread the glue out there. And then where they're joined, you still want to push them in and then add the glue to one side. Now, if you want, you can add glue under the triangles there as well and stick them down. So I'm just gonna, just a little bit of glue just underneath. Okay, and then again, just use my bone folder there just to secure those down. Just means you're gonna get a bit more room inside the box if they're kind of out of the way. Okay, so you can see how that all looks. You want to do exactly the same on this side. Okay, so you should have something like this. And then you want to decide which one you want to be the front. So I'm going to have this side. So I'm going to stick this one down first. I'm going to use my construction glue now, just so this is nice and strong. Fold the base down. And then you can just stick those down either side. And then add a bit more glue on top of those. And then stick that one down there. And just enclose those all underneath. And just flip it around and you can go in and just pop a little bit of pressure on the base there. Now what we want to do is just add a little bit of glue into the corners of these pieces. But you want to leave the back one. Oh, and I seem to have missed a piece off there. Where did I do that then? And why is that the case? What have I missed? Right, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, because I can't even, I don't know, I don't know what piece I've cut away there. So rather than redo it all, because it's such a small piece, I'm just gonna cut a little hinge here, just fold it in half. And then I'm just going to pop that in the corner, like so. There we go. I'm not too worried. It still looks lovely and neat from the outside. But this one here, this back one, you want to keep just as it is. So I'm just going to add a little glue just under this one here and there. And then just pinch those together. Like that. Okay. And that's now the ledge for the lid to sit on. And then the back of the lid will attach to this to create the hinge so it can lift up. Okay, so that's everything there. So apologies about that little bit there. I'm not going to redo the whole box and find out where that's gone because it's such a tiny bit. You really can't notice it. 
Okay, so pop that to one side and then you want your lid and we need to do that same scoring again. So if I flip it this way, so you've got the half inch tab on the left, you've got your score lines that are all down to that first score line. And you're going to score again from the bottom of that first one down to the corner of that large rectangle piece. And then I'm going to go along to the bottom of the next one. You're going to go off in the opposite direction to the bottom corner. And now I'm working within this section. So I'm just going to score from the bottom there down to here and then the bottom there down to here. It's all the same as the base, it's just this we're working on a smaller piece of card. Okay, so we've got like two, got like a chimney effect in this big one, and then we've got a smaller chimney there. Okay, I'm just crossing what ones you want to cut away. So on this one, it's just those two, these two, and that end one. You want to keep on the tab and this half inch, keep these two bottom ones. I think that's what I did. I can always snip them away later if it is though, if I don't need them. Okay, so again, all of those score lines create mountain folds. So we're actually going to remove the bottom piece of these two here. So remove the bottom one, you don't need that one. Okay, what's going to happen is these. this is the bottom and that's just going to fold in and stick down on this piece and give us just a reinforcement. So you just want to just kind of roughly cut the same, it's one inch. So you're just going to cut across like that. Just make sure when it folds in, it doesn't hit the fold. Okay, it's just a reinforcement. So I'm just cutting about one inch. And then again from this side. I just want it to all be able to fold up inside without hitting the score line. So just fold it in and just make sure, see it's clear there and that that folds down fine as well. And again, that could have a little bit more taken off each side. So I'll bring in this one here, which I've already started to decorate and I'll give you all the mats and layers in a moment. So you can fold under and stick these pieces down. Okay, so I'm going to stick those all in because you're going to be attaching each one with this piece here. So I'm just going to use my construction glue on the bottom here and just fold that over. Do that on both pieces. Okay, with the half inch tab, just take a little wedge off of each corner. Okay, now we can stick these together. So take one of the little tabs there, add your glue, and you're gonna stick that to the end of the other one. It's gonna go over the fold there, so you may just wanna take that. You might just wanna cut a little bit more off the angle there because you want it to sit so within the, the the triangle that you're going to fold over so you want to make sure that you can fold that yeah i need to take a little bit more off because i can see there where it's buckling this is just to tack it in place you're going to be sticking all of the triangles together again so don't worry you know think don't think that oh gosh this isn't enough you're going to stick the triangle pieces yet like you did on the base this is just to kind of tack it in so there's that one again just fold that over and just make sure it all lines up with each other i mean you in some ways i guess you could get rid of the tab and just stick the triangle pieces together but i just thought breaking it down like this just might be a bit easier and then again i'm just going to take quite a deep wedge off of that one and make sure that it will hide behind the triangle in fact what i'll do is i'll cut the tab off of this one just so you can see how you will attach it so if you didn't have the tabs at all you're going to add glue straight to the triangles so you're going to put it into its 3d shape straight away and then fold that one over and just sit those together so you've got that triangle so it's just it's up to you and then if I open that up, you'll see you start to get, you know, that angle of the lid there. So you can go in again 
and just give that a good burnish and again i'm just going to add a little bit of glue under the triangle there and stick that onto the short side just so that again anything that you've got because you can have you can have the pile quite high because it can go into the lid whatever the gifts are and again pop my glue into that one and that one and just stick those together and you'll see there all starts to come together on the top so do that again on the other side so it's exactly the same as the base Okay, so that's all stuck down. And then again, with the lid, I'm going to put the back down first, use my construction glue, and then stick down each side. A little more glue on top. And then stick that one down. Again, if you've got anything overhanging, then you can just trim that off. Trim a little bit off before you stick them down. So now that should sit nicely on the top there so you could just keep it like this if you want to it's got an oriental feel about it as well with that shape so i think there's yeah a lot you can do with this next we want to add glue to the top of this back one that we left free and you're going to stick that to the back of the lid so i'm just going to run my glue all the way along like so and then this is probably the fiddliest part you want to sit this inside and then you want to fold that down actually just thinking about it you're going to cut you're going to have to cut a little wedge off the corner there just because again you've got that angle so just butt it right up and then fold that over just hold that there for a second if you can get your bone folder in there Give that a real nice burnish. You want it right butted right down. Like so now it should just drop down nicely. Okay, so just make sure that glue is completely dry and just work that fold. So by giving it a good burnish, it just means it's going to be able to open nicely. So to decorate this very top piece here, I've cut myself a piece of one and one eighth by five and five eighths. And then for the handle, I've got this piece here, which is eight, I believe. Yeah, eight by one. And I've scored along the eight inch side at one and seven. And then just for some extra detail, I've scored at every score line within each of those one inch sections. I'm just going to pop a little curve on there and then just fold out the sides there so we've got that handle and that's going to stick on the top there so that's what they will use to lift the lid up if you want to have it so that they carry it you might want to put some kind of fastening on there or add the bigger handle and i'll show you that in more detail in a moment but i'm not going to be adding it onto this one I'll just stick one down at one end there and then the same with the other end there Okay, this one I'm going to leave black, but on this one here, you can see I added the pattern paper. So you'll want to add a piece of five and three quarter by three quarters of an inch to cover that if you want. Now, if you want to add this handle, I've just popped a hole there and then popped a brad through it. This here is as long as you can get out. You might want to stick a couple of strips together and it was by three quarters of an inch. And you can see how you can stick those in. So you would want to punch the holes before you put the lid in. You could get your hole punch in there, but I would do it before. OK, so to decorate the other sides, I've got these pieces here. So you'll want to cut two pieces of three and a quarter by seven and five eighths for the front and the back. For the side, you'll want two pieces of three and a quarter by just under three and a quarter okay literally just under and then for these ones here the long ones on the top these are one and a quarter by seven and a half 
And then for that one, I didn't write the measurement down for some reason. So that one is, again, one and a quarter by two and seven eighths. What you want to do, make, if it's directional, make sure it's the right way up and flip it over. And you want to come in at seven eighths of an inch, pop a pencil mark. And then again, come in this side at seven eighths of an inch. And then you're going to cut that away. So you want to pop the pencil mark on your blade and then the point on the blade and snip away again here. And now you've got that shape. So you can see I've stuck that one there. So that one will perfectly will go on the back there with a little border. And then with these ones, you want to come in at, it was just over seven eighths of an inch. It's just under one inch. It's that in between measurement. If I do it in centimeters, you're looking at you're looking at like two point five. It's literally just under one inch, okay, on each side. And then again, line up the pencil mark and cut that away. And you'll see how that will now fit on the end there. And then for this one. And you're going to come in at seven eighths at each end. And then on that other piece where it was two and seven eighths, you just again along the bottom, you want to come in seven eighths of an inch. So I'm going to stick all of these down. So just while I let this one dry, I just said for the top pieces, make sure it's the directions the right way up. And then you're coming in from the bottom, you want to come in from the top. So for the top ones, you're coming in you know, one inch or seven eighths of an inch, whatever I said, from the top on the bottom, you come in from the bottom like I showed you. So it's an easy way to remember top from the top, bottom from the bottom. You just want to make sure you've got the angles at the right, you know, direction. How cute is that? Such a sweet style. So then all I've got left to do is the decoration. So I've got my It's Spooky Season. That's from my stamp set. I've got my tag here, which says, Watch Your Poison. So I thought it's spooky season down here and then I've got some string that I'm going to use to attach that. So I've just put these on some foam pads and layered it with my oval dies. I'm just going to put that on there. And then I've got all these little bits to decorate. So I've got the bats spider's web a couple of bats and then the top of there this and then the tag the tag is two by three and then i just came down one inch from the top on each side and then just come across so i've got about half an inch there at the top just cut the corners off use my eyelet there and then i cut a piece of one and three quarter squared matching paper Okay, so that is the finished box there. Love this. I think it's it's just brilliant. And then that opens up. So to make the, if you want to do the pumpkins, or like I said, I think they would be good as apples. So these could be red and then you've got your little green leaf. But you want to cut yourself eight pieces of half an inch by three. Okay, so I've got eight pieces there. And then just holding them all together, I've got my hole punch here. And you just want to punch right the way through all of them. Okay. And again, at the opposite end. Like so. Grab a brad and pop it through all of them at one end. Okay. And then grab your bone folder and just curl all the rest like so and then start to open them up so they all start to face inwards then you want to take the top one okay pop your brad through and then through the next one but keep it all bending inside just work your way around it's really easy it's a great one to do with the kids you know, have a lot of, get them all cut first and then punch the holes and put the brads in. Once you've got them all together, just get your hands in there and just open up your split pin. And then you've got room to place your lint chocolate 
and then you can close it up by just bringing them all around like so and then just to add that little bit of detail i'll just cut this from my creative cuts it was from the flower set and add a little bit of glue and then just pop that on the top one there and there you have a very cute little pumpkin so there you have it those are my very cute little picnic basket style gift bags gift boxes you don't have to have the handles on them i think they will work like i said as a coffin so you can just have it all in black maybe you've got a skeleton that you could have maybe a die cut or a stamp on the top and then fill it with treats i think it's going to look lovely for christmas all decorated birthdays like i said it's got that oriental shape to it as well let me know what you're going to do with it let me know what you think let me know what you're going to fill it with did you like the surprise there of the mini pumpkins inside a lot of you know time goes into creating these especially when they're from this book here because i'm literally just looking at an image and then you know trying to see how i can make that out of paper there's so many cool designs in this so i've got lots of ideas coming but yeah, some of them take longer than others to do. So I'm really pleased with this one. Hope you guys enjoy it too. Because I know lots of you do enjoy the 3D projects that I share. I will link as much of the product as always in the description box below. Remember there's that deal at the moment on the Halloween stamps and dies. And you get that free stamp set. But that is while stocks last. But check out the links and you'll see everything there. If you've enjoyed today, check out the other tutorials coming up now. You might want to watch those next. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And that way you won't miss any future tutorials. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.